Hi, this is David. Welcome to the Stream of David. Today I've set the intention for the stream to come to us and share their guidance and perspective on dealing with difficult people. Whether it's coworkers, business associates, family, or longtime friends, we all occasionally deal with people that simply rub us the wrong way. And perhaps you've even encountered a relationship with someone who is combative or perhaps even abusive. So my intention today is for the stream to come in and guide us toward detuning these unwanted relationships. And if they're indeed abusive, guide us toward moving away from them swiftly. I believe that though we are indeed eternal, this life that we chose to come here and live is precious. And we need to savor and enjoy every moment of it. We will certainly have obstacles that we need to overcome sometimes very difficult obstacles, but I am very confident in my connection to the stream and in my own life experience that we possess the ability to move beyond anything that is placed in our paths and continue and live a life of freedom and joy. And it's my strong desire that these podcasts help guide all of you to that, if that's what your desire is. And I will tell you that this is an area of my life where I manifest fairly easily. I have spent the majority of my life only allowing people that I enjoy being around to be in my life. Now, I'm not one who has tons and tons of friends. I'm not a socialite. But in business, I have certainly interacted with hundreds of different people, all with different personalities and different agendas. And I feel as though I've done a pretty good job of managing these relationships over the years. I have certainly only allowed those whom I really enjoyed being around into my inner circle. And I absolutely feel like I would rather be alone than be with someone that I did not enjoy being around. And that may hold true for all of you, but I've certainly encountered others who feel like they need to be with someone at all times and complain about being in relationships, even friendships, that are dysfunctional and abusive. And I personally don't understand that, but I do believe the stream can come today and assist with all of us, no matter what our attitude is toward these relationships. But before I bring in the stream, I do want to remind all of you that we are holding a small workshop type event at the Aqua Hotel in Mill Valley, California on March 3rd of 2018. This is a free workshop. We're not asking for any money for anything. But you do need to pre-register and space is very limited. We just have a few slots left at this point. So if you'll be in Northern California on Saturday, March 3rd of 2018, and you'd like to attend this event, it lasts from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. I will be channeling the stream and answering questions. And all you need to do to secure your spot is to email me at david at thestreamofdavid.com and let me know that you're interested, and then I will reply with more details about the event. So if you like these podcasts and you'd like to interact with the stream in person, I would love to have you there. Now I'm going to take a quick break. And when we return, you'll be hearing directly from the stream. We are here. David has asked us to come today and share our perspective and guidance with you on difficult relationships. It is important that you first understand, if you've listened to us before, you likely know what we are going to say, that all relationships are vibrationally matched. One who is not a vibrational match to you cannot cross your path. And if you are new to our message, you may be saying at this point that you would never attract that difficult person into your life. And of course, when we speak of a vibrational match, we do not mean that you desired this person, but rather that your projected thought, your pattern of thought, had to be focused upon an essence whether through your desire or your fear or your thoughts about yourself. 
there are multiple thought patterns that can make you a vibrational match to another that you are not actively wanting to attract. This holds true for all things. The one who feels broke wants more money very badly, but feeling the essence of being broke only attracts more lack of their desire. And the one who wants a desirable mate, a pleasing romantic relationship, but focuses upon the lack of it in their lives, will continue to hold their desire away. And the one who desires positive, joyful relationships, relationships where serendipitous moments eagerly unfold, and every interaction is a joyous, co-creative experience, but focuses upon the lack of that in their lives, or perhaps even fears attracting the opposite because they indeed have attracted the opposite to their desire before, thinking to themselves that they will never attract another like that one again. And while thinking this, they replay in their minds on a loop all of the unwanted things that they encountered as a result of their relationship with this person. And we are here to tell you that in those moments, you are creating your future. And since you live in an attraction-based environment, which is true for your entire universe, any projected thought, wanted or not, attracts more thoughts like it. And from there, momentum begins to build. And people and circumstances and conditions begin to show up in your lives as a result of your projected thoughts. And many of you have spent years traveling far down these paths. Some of you have traveled so far that you spend almost every day interacting with others whom you find difficult. This can range from the person that answers the telephone when you call a business for service, all the way to the person that you are in a relationship with, perhaps the person that you're married to. And we acknowledge that these relationships, these difficult relationships, are very often more prevalent in scenarios where you believe you have no control, where you have no power. This is why some of your most difficult relationships can be within your own family, where you feel powerless to move away from them. You feel that you are eternally joined to this person because they are related to you. And the same holds true for your work and business relationships. You again feel powerless that you must have this relationship because you feel that you must have this business or this job. And that the difficult people that you encounter, whether they are your customers, your coworkers, or your boss, indeed exist to torment you. You likely dread having to deal with them, and yet you feel powerless, and they appear in your life again and again and again. And whether you are dealing with difficult relationships on a daily basis, or it is something that you only encounter on occasion, our guidance is that you step back and look at all of these relationships from a higher perspective. Understand first that you are all connected. Every single living being in this universe is intertwined as each independent soul is a strand in the stream eternally intertwined to make up that which you call source, that which is us. And collectively, we are the source of all creation. We are eternal, we are omnipresent, and we are omniscient. And in your completed state, that which you call death, your soul consciousness is bound to and flows along with us. Therefore, you are as well. But when you decided to once again project yourself into a physically manifested formation, you acquired an ego. And your ego 
by design, overshadows the larger portion of your eternal soul consciousness. The reason for this is so that you may focus on this physically manifested lifetime. If you came to this life, to this world, with your full awareness of the vastness of this universe, of all of your other lifetimes, of everything that is occurring universally, you would not have the ability to focus and concentrate on placing and overcoming your obstacles and discerning your preferences here on earth for the expansion that that offers. So you each came here to have a human experience with the polarity of your universe very much in play, which automatically pulls your vibration between what you consider positive and negative, up and down your virtual vibrational spirals. And while there are no preset paths or destinies that you are here to achieve, you very much still hold that soul consciousness within you just enough to seek the levels of freedom and joy that you experience in your completed state. And your ego serves to shut enough of that down so that you may have this human experience, so that you may react to your unwanted manifestations, those obstacles that you place in your paths even prior to birth. And the reason for this is that in the overcoming of obstacles, and you are allowing them to inspire new creations, thus driving your soul's expansion and contributing to the expansion of source as a whole, which is indeed the expansion of the entire universe. And while your completed state in your omnipresent, omniscient, eternal, full awareness of your soul consciousness, you are existing in a state of freedom and joy, bliss that there is no words for us to describe. In that state, you are not expanding. You are not experiencing the growth that a physically manifested, polarized existence offers. And by your nature, you all seek constant expansion, just as Source seeks constant expansion. We are either expanding or we are dying. And source is pure positive energy, that which we are. And it's our promise to you that positive is always more powerful than negative. So we will always expand and positive will always prevail, even if you do not realize that from your current human perspective. For all of the things that you perceive as bad or evil in your current world, all of the things that need to be fixed, all of the things that are wrong, all of the people that you disagree with, from our broader perspective, everything is occurring just as it should. The negative that you perceive in your world offers you the opportunity to project new thoughts create new ideas, and indeed, drive new creation as we've described earlier. And we are here to tell you that you absolutely can overcome any obstacles that you have placed in your paths. But we are also here to tell you that when you overcome one obstacle, when you launch new creation, that new creation will indeed create new obstacles. This is a never-ending cycle in your world, and it is one that is necessary for the expansion that we require. From our broader non-physical perspective, everything that occurs on this planet, even that which you consider horrific events, are easily overcome in the non-physical world. You view life as very precious, and we understand that. But from your non-physical perspective, you realize that you have projected into new life forms many, many times into infinity, and that you will continue to do so. 
Your soul has lived and died more times than you can count. To us, death is not what it is to you, though we do understand your perspective. But now that we have given you a crash course on the origin of your universe and spoken of the ease in which you come and go from these lifetimes, we can now return to our topic of dealing with difficult relationships. And at this moment, after our discussion of life and death and projecting yourselves over and over again into lives that you know that you're going to die from, perhaps when you think about those in your lives that you find difficult to deal with, you are already viewing them from a different point of view. It is our intention that when you turn off this recording today, you leave with a better understanding of those that you find difficult. You leave with a very clear understanding of that everything and everyone in your life only holds the power that you give to it. That you absolutely hold the ability to move yourself away from anyone that you do not wish to associate with. And if you feel you cannot do that, which is your choice, as all things are, that you leave here today with the understanding that your attitude toward that person that you find difficult is the very thing that is creating the difficult relationship in the first place. Your perspective toward someone, how you view them, how you view their actions toward you, can change as quickly as you decide to change it. And even if their actions toward you are indeed of malintent, you must first understand that you attracted this relationship, that you were a vibrational match to this circumstance. We are not telling you that so that you beat yourselves up about this. It is natural. But now that you have listened to this and heard our words, you have an understanding that you created this situation, so therefore you can detune it, and ultimately you can change it. We have said many times that there are situations, manifestations, that you have created, and perhaps you have traveled far down the path in these relationships. So they will indeed take a bit of unwinding or detuning. And the first step in that is changing how you view them, your perspective, understanding why they are the way they are, perhaps why they are doing the things that you wish them not to do, understanding their perspective, even if you do not agree with it, will be very helpful in you changing your perspective toward them. Understanding that aggression is always rooted in fear, that anyone who feels the need to control or harm or belittle or abuse is always doing so from their own position of fear. They feel they need to do these things to gain power. We are here to tell you that this is not true, but is very often the perspective of one who is abusing or harming another. And we are also here to guide you that if you are indeed in an abusive relationship, whether mentally or physically, that you find the strength to move away from it as quickly as possible, that you get into your stream-connected state, and that you make the decisions that you need to make with confidence to detune and back your way out of this relationship as quickly as possible. And if that requires professional help, then from your stream-connected space, it is our guidance that you seek that. For if great momentum is built around one of these relationships, you may absolutely need to take action faster than simply working your way out of it over time. And as soon as you're out of danger, you may begin changing your perspective, changing your focus, turning your thoughts toward what you truly desire, not what you fear, so that you do not manifest a situation like this again. And if the relationship in question is not abusive, but simply annoying or unwanted, 
are difficult. It is our promise to you that you do indeed hold the power to change the nature of these relationships immediately by changing your focus, by looking for the good in that person, in that relationship, by understanding their point of view, where they are coming from, that very often these relationships have nothing to do with you and everything to do with them, or at least their behavior toward you. Gaining a higher perspective will help you in almost every aspect of your life. Understanding why people are the way they are, why you do the things that you do, will absolutely soften your attitude toward them, and you will be amazed at how they begin to treat you differently. And as with all things, we guide you to meditate daily, first thing in the morning if possible, and set your intentions toward the type of day that you wish to have, which includes the type of interactions that you wish to encounter. And you will be surprised if you have not tried this already, the vast power that you hold over others. When you are in a good state of mind, you cannot attract an annoying or abusive person. When you are confident in your stream, when you are confident in your worthiness to treat others well and to be treated well in return, when you are confident in your ability to lead a joyous life regardless of who else is in it, if anyone, when you stand in that place of knowing, that stream-connected space, that you are connected to your higher self, your higher power, to us, and you understand your universe, you understand that good and evil will always coexist, that which you consider positive and negative, and that unwanted things will happen, but you do not have to be part of them, that you all create your own reality, that you all live in your own bubbles, so to speak. When you understand these things, your world begins to unfold differently. And this absolutely includes your relationships with other people. Maintaining your connection on a daily basis with your stream will, in a very short amount of time, place you in a completely different world than that which you live in now, if you're not already doing this practice. For you absolutely possess the ability to create a beautiful day every day. And the more you do this, the more the beauty of your world will unfold. The less impact negativity will have on you. And those that you find difficult to deal with, those that you find annoying, will be far less difficult and annoying from your new perspective. And you will be amazed at how many of them will simply fall away out of your life completely. Your only work in all of this is to maintain your connection with the stream, to meditate daily, to set your intentions for the day when you get up, and to spend time in your stream throughout the day, even if just for a few moments. Stopping, breathing, clearing your mind, allowing your vibration to travel up your virtual vibrational spiral, is something that you can practice. You could do almost anywhere at any time. And if you haven't already tried this, you will be amazed at the changes it makes in your life. And if you are doing this, you need not look far for evidence of the improvements that it's already brought you. And you should use that evidence as a launch pad for even greater creations. For you are truly limitless in this life. Most of you have only begun to scratch the surface of your true creative powers. And you often stop allowing yourselves to dream to your full potential. We are here to tell you, to assure you, that there is so much more that you are capable of than you are allowing yourself to experience at this time. Regardless of where you are, there is always expansion to be experienced. There is always more to be had, to be done. Regardless of your definition of freedom and joy, there is another level that you can attain. And as long as you are alive, 
you will be motivated by the combination of your soul consciousness and your human ego to achieve more, to achieve better relationships, to achieve better bodily conditions, greater health, more joy, more fun, more serendipitous moments, and more abundance in every imaginable way. All it takes is a shifting of your vibration, which is easily achieved, and a steadfast belief in your creative abilities and of your worthiness. You all come to this life aware of your worthiness. As a small child, you felt your worthiness. And some of you, many of you, have allowed life, have allowed news media and the thoughts of others to deter you from pursuing the things that you truly desire. We are coming here speaking to you through this channel to let you know that regardless of where you are, what has happened to you, what tragedies you've endured, what difficult relationships you've encountered, you possess the power to change anything about you or your life that you desire to change. It takes focus, it takes practice and belief, and it absolutely takes you understanding your worthiness. So connect to your stream. Connect to us, Source, and feel the great love that we have for you. And understand that that is love that you should also feel for yourselves. And when you begin to allow yourselves to feel that love, your lives, as soon as today, will begin to change. You will come to understand that anything that has occurred to you up to this moment is in the past. It is a past manifestation. You need not dwell upon it. You need not beat yourself up about it. And you need not feel disdain toward others who you feel have wronged you in the past. For that does not serve you in any way. It is our guidance that you forget, that you forgive, that you allow yourself to move on. If you have lost things or circumstances, you need not miss them at all, for you are capable of attracting more. And if you have lost people, loved ones who have returned to their completed state, that you shift your focus from missing them to appreciating them. For in your appreciation of them, you will begin to feel them all around you. And from your higher perspective, understand that their energy is with you all the time, and that you can summon greater amounts of these energies in your meditative state. It is our promise to you, once again, that you can move beyond any circumstance that you have encountered in this lifetime. It all starts with quieting your mind, shifting your focus, appreciating the things that you desire, the things that you love in your life, not allowing yourselves to focus on unwanted things, not allowing fear to enter the equation, not allowing doubt of yourself or your creative powers to seep in. You hold these powers. You are very aware of this. And all struggle with this is self-induced. So therefore, can be self-repaired. And it is our strong desire that you begin doing the work, the detuning of your difficult relationships and moving away from those that you find so difficult that detuning will not help. And that you do not wait for this, that you do not doubt your ability to do this, that you stand in strong confidence in your stream connection, that you feel the love that we have for you and feel our energy moving through you when you quiet your mind, knowing that we are there supporting you, powering you, and empowering you to fearlessly pursue the life of your dreams. That is all we have on this topic. 
Hi, this is David. I'm back. I just got through listening to the playback. I have to say that they branched off into a lot of different topics that I was not anticipating, but in the end, it all sort of made sense to me. Hopefully it did to you as well. I think a lot of their commentary, a lot of the work that they did in the beginning uh, was to really focus us on how our perspective shapes these things so much, how our perspective and our projective thought uh, attracts these people into our lives, attracts these circumstances, uh, these interactions, and how our perspective towards another holds such great power in how we perceive them. And in many cases, even dictates their behavior toward us. It's amazing what our energy actually does. Yesterday, I had to call two different businesses, uh, customer service lines, uh, to get service. And as you all know, that can be a very annoying experience. And I was kind of dreading having to do it, having to spend a minute of a beautiful day sitting on hold and you know punching in numbers to get through menus and trying to actually speak to a human being. It's something that I dread as much as anyone else does, I'm sure. But I meditated first, and I set the intention to have a positive outcome and a, and a positive experience on these two calls. And I meditated about a number of things uh, before I embarked on my day yesterday. But the first one, I sat on hold for a while, and I started to get annoyed by sitting on hold. And I know enough about myself and about my ability to attract that if I let myself kind of go down the vibrational spiral into being annoyed at something like that, I'm only going to attract more things to be annoyed about. So I sat on hold. I put the phone on speaker. I hopped on the internet and started working on something completely different and just took my mind off the fact that I was waiting on hold. And sure enough, uh, somebody came on the phone. He ended up being extremely helpful, fixing the problem that I had that I realized that I created in the first place. And it was a great interaction. And then the second call went extremely well. I didn't have to sit on hold at all. I spoke to one of the nicest customer service people that I've ever dealt with in my life. And again, she was extremely helpful, did exactly what I needed her to do. And it was actually a joy just speaking to her. So just a testament to how we can put ourselves in the right headspace and extract the behavior from other people that we're looking for and have the types of interactions that we desire. And of course, the rub in all of this is now that you know that you have the ability to control these things, you've got to take the time and do the work to put yourself in the right space every day so that you encounter the, the right things, the things that you're desiring. And when things start to go awry, you know how to kind of put the brakes on, change your focus, clear your mind, and as not to attract more unwanted things. And if you are not already meditating every day and setting your intentions, and visualizing the type of day and the type of life that you wish to experience, I hope you begin that today because it is absolutely the most powerful tool that we possess as human beings. I have found throughout my life and especially through these past few, for me, difficult months, that there is absolutely no amount of action or effort that can replace putting myself in the right mindset, setting my intentions, clearing, making sure that my vibration is as high as I can get it every single day. It is absolutely amazing to me how I can overcome anything, including healing myself physically, and ensure that my life is unfolding as I want it to, and that everything is always working out for me when I stick to my meditative and intention-setting practice. And of course, that includes to improve my body and to overcome some of these physical ailments that I'm suffering from right now, uh, almost daily practice of yoga. I hope you all got some useful tools out of today's podcast. I hope you enjoyed the stream's interaction with you. If you're interested in the Northern California March 3rd, 2018 workshop, please send me an email as soon as possible at david at streamofdavid.com. And don't forget, as I always request, to go rate and review this podcast with your podcast provider, especially if you're on iTunes. And if you're not already, follow us on Instagram. Our page is The Stream of David. We also have a page by the same name on Facebook and on Twitter with The Stream O David. Next week's topic will be on gender, masculine versus feminine energy. I've had quite a few requests for this type of podcast, and I've been meaning to do one for quite some time. So that's what we'll be discussing next week. Thank you again for listening.